the ongoing war in Ukraine, one that has been dragging on for 15 months or so, a new war seems to have taken off. A war over who occupies which territory has now broken out. Both sides, Moscow and Kiev, have contradictory accounts of the status of Bakhmut. Russia's Wagner mercenaries were congratulated for capturing Bakhmut. Ukraine, though, has strongly rejected those claims. What is this based on? There is footage that was released by the Russian side wherein they could be seen hoisting their national flag on buildings across the city of Bakhmut. On the other hand, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that Bakhmut still stands strong at the G7 meeting that he attended in Hiroshima over the weekend. Now remember, this was his first summit since the war started last year where he made a physical appearance. He spoke to the leaders from Europe, from America, India, Japan, putting forward a request to help Ukraine and put a decisive end to the war, something that he's been talking of as far as the end of this year is concerned. Despite this, if we were to take a closer look at Bakhmut, the Ukrainian defences have drastically deteriorated. The fortress, or as it was referred to, holds a rather symbolic significance for the country. It has been a crucial battlefield for Ukraine. It is also extremely crucial for Russia, for what they call is liberation of the territory that they claim support of. There are a huge number of corpses of Ukrainian soldiers. Bakhmut has been captured completely in all its legal borders, down to the last centimeter. Vladimir Alexandrovich Zelensky is lying, or he, like our military leaders, is simply not awake of what is happening on the ground. The last one ran across the road about an hour and a half ago in a woman's dress. We shot him dead. We are not taking prisoners. Despite all of their loud statements, we silently and very effectively are doing our job. Also, everything that the heroes of Bakhmut have done to destroy this group Wagner will have been worth it in the future when our units, trained abroad in Ukraine, become battle-ready and kick the demoralized and unfit enemy out of the country. Raslan Botnik, Director of Ukrainian Institute of Politics, joins us on this broadcast. My colleague Sanjay will also be joining us shortly. But thank you so much for speaking with us here on News 18 Global, Mr. Botnik. And I want to ask you, it's claim versus claim as far as the region of Bakhmut is concerned. Why is this so important, this particular area? It's significant for both sides. Hello, colleagues. It's important from the political and military side. Uh, from political side, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of... Uh, on what way war is going on, who is winning this war. And of course, in Ukraine and around Ukraine, abroad, there were a lot of talking about the Bakhmut, that uh, uh, the success or not success of Ukrainian troops around Bakhmut. But nowadays, it looks like Ukraine has lost Bakhmut, but the Ukrainian troops are trying to continue the offensive operation around Bakhmut. And from military side, uh, it's also important because uh, Bakhmut is a city, it's a small, not, not so big city, it's destroyed for 70%, but it's a city which is situated in the crossroad of the big uh, roads in Donbass. And nowadays, the uh, side who is uh, controlling the, the Bakhmut is uh, ready to continue for offensive operation in three ways at the same time, to the Slovians, to the, uh, to, to the west, uh, to the north, to the severs, and to the south. And so it's uh, Ukrainian offensive operation uh, became uh, more difficult after they losing the battle. Now, Mr. Botnik, uh, President Zelensky has made it clear that uh, Bakhmut hasn't fallen, but uh, that's a claim that has been uh, rejected by the Russian side, and they have released some sort of uh, footage, what they call as evidence, as to why they're claiming uh, their, uh, their, why they're staking claim on that territory. Do you think then, optics-wise, Russia perhaps is winning the Battle of Bakhmut? For me personally, it looks like uh, Ukraine has lost the control over the, the Bakhmut. And, uh, but we, we should to remind the previous goal of Russia around Bakhmut. Russia tried to surround the old Bakhmut region, including the Hromovo, uh, uh, Chervone, and the Chasivyar city. And the Russia was not possible to do this, and Russia was not possible to surround Ukrainian troops in this region. And so, and it means that uh, even the capturing the Bakhmut. Russia uh, hasn't obtained the uh, humane goal of destroying the uh, Ukrainian troops in this re region.
But Mr. Botnik, uh, do you think this is going to be a turning point in the war, so to say? Because uh, just a few days ago, we had uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky come out and say that by the end of this year, we want a decisive end to the war. We've also been hearing of the Ukrainian counteroffensive uh, of it being just around the corner. At such a time, if Bakhmut has really fallen, or at least parts of it are majoritarily under the Russian uh, uh, capture, then where do you think this counteroffensive or uh, the Ukrainian side of the war is going to go from here? I don't think that the operation around the Bakhmut should be like a turning point point in this war. But it means that the next place will be chosen for the next fight, for the next battle in this war, because no one of the sides is possible to continue the high-level struggle on the all the line of this battlefield. So it means that they, they will, will take the next battle, but this battle is, was, was very important from the, uh, from the uh, resources, from the uh, dying a lot of soil soldiers, but it's not a turning point in this war. Sure. Turning point, uh, perhaps, uh, maybe a bit too far to say, uh, and many would agree with you uh, on that particular thing. But it's not just about optics, isn't it, as far as Bakhmut is concerned. It's a logistical hub. It's a hub uh, the, for transport uh, industries as well. So it's not just uh, significant for the two countries involved, but it could be significant for the entire region. Uh, maybe because Russia is uh, Russia obtained the uh, possibility to uh, fight for the last uh, major district district in Donbas. I'm talking about the Slovyansk Kramatorsk region. It's a it's a last uh, the bigger part of the Donbas, which is under the control of Ukraine. So Russia uh, became closer to obtaining uh, her previous goal in this war to obtain to take it all the Donbas. But uh, the, I think the fight uh, uh, on uh, Slovensk and Kramatorsk will be even more difficult than it was around the Bakhmut. Sure. Psychological boost or not, military boost or not, this definitely is a big development as far as the war is concerned. Ratslan Botlik, thank you so much for speaking with us mm -hmm. here and sharing your perspective. My colleague Sanjay Suri also joining us, getting us the very latest. And as far as this war goes, Sanjay, we've seen it's been dragging on for 15 months or so. Uh, Confident front is what President Zelensky put at the G7 summit. He said, if everyone bands together behind me, then we will put a decisive end to this particular war. But as far as the recent developments are concerned and whether Bakhmut has fallen or not is concerned, how do you think that's going to pan out uh, militarily for Ukraine, also psychologically in terms of the boost, uh, in terms of the morale of uh, the people actually fighting on ground? Well, this uh, fall of Bakhmut, and without doubt, the city Bakhmut appears to have fallen to the Russians. We have now imagery of uh, Russian and Wagner forces raising uh, their flag on the westernmost building in uh, Bakhmut, the one that is closest to the Ukrainian side. And uh, we have acknowledgement from Ukrainian military officials that they have lost much of Bakhmut. So that is not in doubt. And this really is more of a psychological booster, more a prestige point, if you like, and a very bloody prestige point. It has been almost a year of fighting in Bakhmut. But to the extent that the Wagner forces have captured Bakhmut, to that extent, it is a victory and a symbolic victory. But there is another side, another dimension unfolding now, it seems, on what is happening around Bakhmut. There have been a number of counter-offensive moves by Ukrainian forces around Bakhmut. And this is leading to some thinking whether this could be a move then to encircle Bakhmut and to isolate Russian forces inside Bakhmut. We'll have to see how that plays out. But certainly the fall of Bakhmut uh, from the Ukrainian point of view is not the end of anything. It is not even necessarily the end of Bakhmut. And the counteroffensive that we have been waiting for is likely to proceed and it's not going to proceed necessarily or even more likely in the direction of Bakhmut. And as far as uh, the world's support to Ukraine is concerned, at the G7 summit, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky had one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with several leaders. The subject of Ukraine and how to uh, push Russia into a further corner was also discussed. But as far as uh, delivery of more arms and armaments is concerned, what is the timeline that we're looking at? Because that is something that uh, it looks like Ukraine has been waiting for as far as launching its counteroffensive is concerned. 
Well, that timeline as far as Ukraine goes has been stretched far too long. Uh, see how long there was hesitation uh, in NATO about supplying of tanks to Ukraine. Uh, how long they hesitated before supplying adequate air defense systems and they are still not adequate. How long they have been waiting before finally we have a nod to training of F-16 pilots and then a clearance from the U.S. for supply of F-16s to Ukraine, which is still some way down the line, some months at least. And Ukraine needs all this to conduct that counteroffensive. Ukraine has lost a great deal of time, but there is now a greater urgency to support Ukraine. It might even be that the fall of Bakhmut can be claimed by Ukraine as an instance of what can happen to the rest of the country if NATO doesn't step in with enough support and in time. So this could be used politically and eventually therefore militarily to Ukraine's advantage to convince NATO that the threat from Russia is still real and Ukraine will not be able to withstand it without enough arms and ammunition. Absolutely, which is why uh, a renewed pitch was made by uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky at the G7 summit as well. His first in-presence appearance at any multilateral forum ever since the war began. Where this goes next, what are the kind of uh, claims and counterclaims that we see, we'll keep an eye out on. But for the moment, Sanjay, thank you so much for getting us the latest.